Welcome to the Illumi Rail range of products from FH Brundle. This presentation shows the range of available products and some techniques for successful installation. The main components of the Illumi Rail handrail lighting system are two types of transformer, one 12 volts and the other 24 volts. Connection cables to link transformers to fitments. Extension cables, which allow transformers to be located further away from the fitments. Signal cables, which link motion detectors, touch screens and control devices together. And then, the two different types of fixture, which are single lens, pod LEDs and rigid bar lights. These come in two lengths and can be white, single colour or colour changing. Finally, there are the control devices mentioned earlier, which consist of motion detectors, which also have a day-night sensor built in. And then, these two similar looking devices. This one, called a PWM, changes the colour of the lighting bar when the user operates the touchscreen. And this one, turns the single colour lighting systems on and off. Here's how the components connect together. The single lens, or pod, works on 12 volt DC. The rigid bars work on 24 volt DC, and the two systems can't be mixed. The connectors on the output side and the transformers are waterproof, as are all of the connectors in the system. Transformers don't link directly to the LED lights. They connect to extension cables, connection cables, which do connect to the lights, or the control devices. It's best practice to have the transformer in the middle of a run of lights and to use both outputs from the transformer, which between them will power up to six long or 12 short LED bars. The bars are daisy chained like so. Terminate the end of a run of rigid bars with a two pin end cap. Line up the two arrows click into place. The single lens LEDs are connected using gel crimps and fit 24mm diameter holes. The connection cable has two strands and no sheath. To fit a pod to this cable, simply insert the red pod connector cable into the blind hole in the gel crimp and pass the connection cable red strand through the crimp like so. Close the gel crimp with the gel crimp tool and the connection will be made. Repeat for the black connection cables. The end of the connector cable should be terminated with the gel crimp supplied. Where day, night and motion detection is required, passive infrared detectors can be fitted. Take care when removing the front cover of the PIR as there are connectors inside which may be attached. Inside the PIR, there are two places to make signal cable connections. The inline relay acts as a switch and is controlled by the PIR. A signal cable needs to be fitted between the PIR and the relay. The signal cables have three wires. If connection is being made to a PIR or to a color touch controller, then there are screw down connectors on those devices. This cable has a three-pin waterproof connector at one end. These connect like so. The cable passes through the enclosure wall using the glands supplied. Full instructions are supplied with the PIR, which is equipped with the daylight sensor, passive infrared detector, and on the inside, there are two adjusters. One is to set the threshold between daylight and night, the other allows the PIR to be tested and set up, disabled, set to permanently on, or to determine the length of time that the lights remain on after activation. To operate the RGB colour changing strip, a PWM should be placed between the transformer and the strip. There are two three-pin connectors for the signal cable daisy chain to pass through.
This large two-pin connector fits into the transformer. You'll notice that the last connector has four pins, which attaches to a 5, 10 or 20 meter connection cable, which in turn connects to the RGB rigid bar. The connections to the rear of the color touch are made via the green connector block. The unit is supplied with its own power supply, which should be connected to the terminal block. These are the connectors for the three strands of signal cable, A, B and ground. The green block only fits in one orientation. The signal cable should be connected from the color touch to the PWM. This cable has a three pin waterproof connector at one end, which clicks into one of the connectors on the PWM. These connect like so. Once the power is turned on to the transformer and the color touch screen is plugged in, the strips will illuminate. The last RGB bar should have a four pin end cap fitted. When it comes to fitting the single lens LED pods, the cable is threaded through the handrail which should have been pre-drilled with 24mm diameter holes at 300mm centres. The pods should not be inserted into the hole until all of the installation is tested. A small loop of connection cable should be pulled through the hole nearest to the transformer and the first pod is fitted as described earlier. When all of the pods have been checked, they can be inserted into the tube where they simply click into place. Extra holes can be drilled into the flange to locate one or two two millimeter rivets for extra security. The rigid bar is held in place using these clips which fit into split tube. To fix the clip, Tighten the grub screws as shown. There's a cable tidy which acts as containment for the cables and connectors. There are online resources available at brundle.co.uk and a specialist help team is available to advise on specification and installation.